Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the absolute basics as well as uh, some of the interface options of the Ju-1000 NX. But before I get started, I just wanted to share with you really quickly how you can get this cool device. All you got to do is pop over to the marketplace uh, and you can see a couple different options here. Go to full catalog. Uh, moments later, you're going to have a bunch of different things on here on the left. I like to click on category and there's a little avionics switch. Uh, when you push that, if for some reason you can't see anything, double check to make sure this didn't accidentally get clicked up here because when that happens, it basically ignores the free things. And then you're going to get this great thing that says G1000 NXI. You go ahead and click on that and there's going to be a little button here that allows you to download it. That's literally as difficult as it is to set this up. Uh, now that you have it, let's go ahead and take a look at the interface. The G1000 NX is split into two different displays. Uh, the first display on the left, this is going to be your PFD. This is your primary flight display. The purpose of this is basically to take all these lovely instruments down here and compile it into one place. We'll take a look at the specifics in a moment. On the right side, we have our MFD. This is the multifunction display. This sort of acts as our moving map. It gives us some options, it gives us some engine system settings. It also allows us to you know, customize flight plans, set up VNAV and things like that. Each one of these displays is uh, basically independent of each other. In the real world, should one fail, the other one usually will grab onto it and actually jump in. We also have this really, really fun button down here. And if you push it, nothing happens. <laughs> what would happen if you were in an emergency is that would basically give you like an emergency kind of little setup here that allows you to work on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these in turn. Uh, the first one, our lovely little PFD, you know, our primary flight display, has basically got their good old-fashioned screen here. And on the outside, you have a series of different buttons that give you different functions. It's worth noting that all these buttons on this side are actually actually duplicated on the side of this one as well. Remember when they designed this unit, they realized if we had a failure of one, we should be able to use the other one for those particular purposes. There's a couple different rules that you're gonna have to kind of watch out for. The first one is if you hold your mouse over a knob and it turns into an arrow, you actually have the ability to roll your mouse wheel for the purposes of adjusting things. You roll it up, it's gonna increase. If you roll it down, it's gonna decrease. Sometimes you're gonna find things that are buttons. Buttons, you always have a little thing that kind of looks a little bit like a finger. Uh, when I click a button, you can see it switches between the two different modes. If you want to kind of think about it, this would be grabbing, this would be buttoning. To make things a little more complicated, believe it or not, some buttons actually have multiple areas to rotate them. So if I actually hold my mouse over this, you're going to notice there's a big outside knob, and you're also going to notice there's a little inside knob. To make things even more complicated, this entire knob can be pushed in. For example, if I click on this, you'll notice it switches between which radio I'm currently editing the frequency of. The way that they always design these things is that the little knobs are always for adjusting values. The big knobs are always going to be for adjusting places. So right now, for example, I notice that um, since we're dealing with frequencies and there's no place to jump between, when I adjust the big knob by holding my mouse over and either clicking or rolling my mouse wheel, you'll notice it changes the big part of the frequency. If I hold my mouse over it and switches to a tiny arrow, you'll notice it's going to switch to the tiny frequencies, which is going to be, you know, a little tens and thousands or hundreds of places down here. The other kind of knobs you're going to see is going to be the single ones. You know, we notice this one's got the double. This one's got a single. This one's for selecting our heading bug here. What I can do is I can hold my mouse over it again, and I can go ahead and adjust it. Now, the way my setting is up at home is you'll notice I can adjust this value without actually having any impact on the knob. There is no direct synchronization between this and the actual value if you have some kind of external button. Below that, we have the automatic pilot controls. Uh, the AP on this one is a very sophisticated piece. Uh, this is an expensive autopilot, but it has a lot of really useful functions that we'll take a look at. Below that, again, we have another example of one of those dual knobs. Notice if I hold my mouse over the large part of the knob, I change thousands of feet. Notice if I hold my mouse over the smaller, I go ahead and change in hundreds of feet. One of the nice features here is if I exceed 900 feet here, it will automatically jump up to the next thousand, which is super handy. Below the bottom of the PFD, you can have a collection of different buttons for different options. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with these, basically this is not a touch screen, but instead it tells you what menu you have currently selected. So in this case, I've got my map and my HSI. If I click this button right here, it brings up a new menu that gives you the ability to kind of surf through new options. Let's say I wanted to go into my layout. Let's say I want to shut off my map. I could go ahead and press the button underneath it called the soft key. Now, if I ever need to return back to my main menu, I can press the back button a bunch of times until until I get back to the main area where I have the ability to see all my different menu options at once. Now it's worth noting if, uh, let's say for example, I pop up this menu right here, 
Um, what you can do is if you ever need to get back, 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 always find the back, back, back button and you'll be able to get yourself in a safe spot. Now, sometimes the menus aren't going to appear down here, but instead are actually going to pop up as their own side menu like the one that you see here. Now, if I press the clear button, that will automatically get rid of a specific menu that pops up. Notice if I press it a second time, it also makes it go away. So one of the neat things is you can open up a menu and then select something else without closing the menu you're currently operating on. So I'm going to go ahead and get back. I'll go ahead and clear that menu out like that. The next thing we're going to take a look at is um, some little uh, context options, as I always like to call them. Note when I have my little display here, if I were to come over here and press on the menu button right here, it's going to give me the ability to set the brightness of my display. I can actually sit here and I can set the keys too if I wanted to. Again, remember your little knob here is going to be selecting uh, things that are in the way. The big knob is going to be selecting pieces. So for example, if I wanted to set my PFD display and I did not want it to be on auto brightness, I could simply use my little mouse button here to go ahead and roll this to select the value, select the value I want, press the enter key, and now if I use the um, change the places button, I can bop to this one and go ahead and reduce that brightness if I wanted to. If I wanted to undo that, all I could do is again use the big wheel here to go over to manual, use the little wheel to go ahead and set it back up to auto, and then press ENT for enter. Now if I want to get rid of this display, I can press menu again, or I can press the clear button. Now notice, pressing clear on menu doesn't make it go away because I have something currently selected. So I'm going to go ahead and press menu, poof, and it is gone just like that. So on the MFD over on this side, now things are just about the, basically the same. We have the same duplicated set of buttons here, and we have a couple different options down here. Making things a little bit more complicated on this one, however, is the fact that on the far side, let's go ahead and make this yoke go away, you're going to notice that we have an FMS control knob, just like we have on this one. These two control knobs are very similar, except on this one, it controls page. Let me show you what I mean. So if I were to hold my mouse over this little knob and go ahead and start wheeling it, you'll notice it gives me two things. It gives me a traffic display, and if I roll it again, it goes ahead and gives me my navigation map. What you also probably notice is along the bottom here, I'll go ahead and try to keep it coming here, is it gives me a bunch of individual pages I can select to use this display to show. So for example, if I grab the big knob right now and I rotate it once to the right, one more time, it's going to bring up a different menu. In this case, it's going to bring up waypoint information. Uh, there's a lot going on. Now, if I wanted to select a specific type of waypoint information, I could hold my mouse over this little knob and wheel it and go ahead and select what particular page of this, uh, basically sub page of this group that I'm interested in doing. Now, it's worth noting here is this gets a little more complicated because you probably notice that I have the ability to enter some lines here, but I don't have something that allows me to type. Why am I going to type it? Well, that's where this is going to get a little more interesting. If I want to be able to type on any line that is cyan, all you have to do is come over here and push in on that button. When you do that, you'll notice that this is now highlighted. You've activated the cursor. Now, if you push that button a second time, that's going to disable that particular option. When the cursor is active, think about it as holding your mouse on the page. When the cursor is not, think about switching between the pages. So let's go ahead and push that knob in one more time. You'll notice if I use the big one, I can't change anything here. The reason I can't is because until we've dialed in some kind of location here, it's not going to immediately recognize any of these other pages that we have the ability to control. Note that the color scheme here is set up in such a way that the ones you can control are usually going to be typically be blue. The ones you cannot control are typically going to be white or a different color, depending on context. Now let's go ahead and use this as a quick example. So since we are not changing location of my box and we're changing what specific letters in my box, I'm just going to hold my mouse over here and go ahead and select something. In this case, I'll let's go ahead and use the airport that we're already at. We'll use a 4 Bravo Niner. So I use the little knob to change the letter. I use the big knob now to change where I am. So we'll do 4 Bravo, and we're going to select Niner. You're going to have to get used to that because you're going to be using that quite a bit when you use flight plan stuff a little bit later. If I'm happy with this, all I have to do is press the Enter key, and now notice, whoosh, it gives me a super detailed layout of that particular option. And now notice I have a new context that I can now use my little knob to play around with. Now, if we had multiple runways, I can highlight this and then use the little knob to change between the runways. Now, the other thing where this gets cool is you'll notice I can actually come down here to individual frequencies and actually select those frequencies if I need to do so. Now, how do I get back to my original page? Well, all we're going to do now is we're going to make sure we're not on a value that we can change. 
push in on the cursor, notice it's no longer highlighted, and now we can use the big knob to go ahead and change what particular page that we're on. Again, this is an excellent, excellent, excellent tool for the purposes of kind of surfing through it. It takes a little bit to get used to and you will get the hang of it. Um, some people actually have dual knob setups on their actual setup, duh, and they'll have the ability to sweep, tweak these directly. Now, the last one we're gonna take a look at, and uh, before we conclude this video real quickly, whoa, is going to be taking a look at this middle panel here. Now, you're gonna notice that these two are basically copies of each other, minus the little tiny bit of uh, knob differences. But you're also gonna notice right here in the middle, you have all your different communication radios. Uh, this basically works by selecting the thing you want to talk through, and then you wanna select the thing you wanna listen through. I know that sounds a little weird, but it actually makes sense. Uh, let's say we wanna speak into COM1, but we wanna to listen to COM1, makes sense. If I wanna speak into COM1, but I wanna to listen to COM2 and COM1, you notice that the arrow above it has both been selected for each side. Now, if I had a third communication radio, which I do not, I could turn this one on as well, just by pressing it. Again, if the arrow is on, it means we're listening to it. Where this gets kind of fun in the real plane, of course, is you can do a passenger address. Boop, this is your captain speaking. We will be departing in just a moment. We're experiencing some YouTube-related delays. Sorry. So um, that gives us the ability to do that. Sometimes you even have things like music, which I uh, have this little aux button. You can actually plug in a little cable and uh, listen to MP3s or something like that. You even have a little playlist, which is really cool. Uh, we also have the ability to turn on individual navigation radio sound as well. For example, if I'm listening to the VOR and Nav 1, I could press this button and start listening to it immediately. If you want to tweak with your volume, uh, that is what this little guy is going to be for here. Again, we want to go up, we want to go down, we want to go up, we want to go down. This thing is already cranked up pretty high. So if I were listening to it, I would be able to hear. All right. So hopefully this video uh, demystifies uh, some of the controls. Uh, you're going to see things in the future videos that are basically going to walk you through, you know, how to set up the interface in such a way that you want to make it work best for you. And we're also going to take a look at specifics as far as uh, flight plans and autopilot later. Enjoy.